This morning in higher learning, when it comes to putting technology to work in the classroom, the common wisdom at the, is that more is better. But a new book called The Shallows argues that the internet may be short-circuiting our ability to think. Here to talk about the uses of technology in our classrooms and what it may mean for how we learn is Peter Kerwin from the Rhode Island Higher Education Assistance Authority. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Ben. First question, pretty basic. Is the internet making us stupid? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you should ask that because, I mean, there's always a contrarian in the crowd, right? Somebody to go against the trends and yep. of the latest trends and, and Nicholas Carr who wrote the book is certainly that guy I mean he uh, he actually wrote an article for the Atlantic a couple of years ago entitled is Google making us stupid so I mean his whole take he's got an interesting kind of argument. Is almost. <laughs> you know he, he what he's saying is that the way we're taking in information from online sources from digital media is actually in a way making us less thoughtful about what we're, we're looking at. And, and it's an interesting argument. I mean, if you think about it, like the lecture model, the old lecture model, somebody standing up imparting information, you're taking notes. Pretty simple, pretty basic, seemed to work for a long time. But now you're adding in all these bells and whistles. You're throwing in PowerPoint presentations, smart boards. You know, you're letting people have laptops yeah. in the classroom. And the thing is, with bells and whistles, they're essentially distractions. And what his argument is, that we're having our attention divided with all of this, and that really has problems in terms of the way our brains work. It impedes our ability to transfer information from the short-term memory, which is basically the holding pen yeah. for all the stuff that's being thrown at us during the day, to the long-term memory where we do our thinking, where we do our comprehension. And so that's a very interesting argument. And what he does is he points to a lot of I different... I agree with it 100%. Yeah, and yeah. he points to a lot of different studies especially one that I found really interesting called the laptop and the lecture. And what he did was there were, a professor gave the same lecture to two different classes. The first group had laptops. The second didn't. Now what you'd expect is the class without the laptop had better comprehension, and that's the way it worked. But what was really interesting was even for those students with laptops, the ones who were like going to websites that were related to the lecture that they were being pointed to during the lecture did worse than the students who were just surfing the internet oh, or wow. doing something useless. And that's because their attention was being divided. And they're so almost dependent on it. Eh, I'll just find it online. Exactly. Is, is there a happy medium? Is there a way you can kind of... Yeah. I'm sure a lot of teachers want to use the latest technology. Exactly. I think what you have to do is just realize that, you know, you have to put some thought into it and realize that more messages, more media, more social networking doesn't always produce the desired outcomes. It's like us in our personal lives. You know, I went away to, to Maine for a vacation this weekend, didn't have access to the internet or the, or the phone, you know, so for my email, yeah. couldn't check out my fantasy baseball team. <laughs> but you know what? I actually read some books. I had some nice conversations. Nice to have with a break people. from the table. Yeah. And, you know, then I, my daughter kicked my butt in a Monopoly deal a few times. <laughs> so, you know, it was nice. It's just a break where you get to think about things. Yeah. It's like that in our lives. It's like that in the way we work. Put the phones and, down, and put learn. the blackberries down, relax for a little bit. Exactly. Peter, thank you so much with that shirt and this advice. You're unstoppable. <laughs> See, you're ready to go. More information on technology in the classroom, head to foxprovidence.com.